Hi, my name is Brian Smith. In this video, I'm going to cover one of the new RHEL 8 beta features, which is XFS Copy on Write Data Extents. This feature allows for files to share common data blocks, and when the files are modified, to allocate data blocks as needed for the changed sections of the files. This feature makes it fast to copy files and can save space. To get started, we'll run XFS info on the root file system. You can see here that ref link equals one. This is the default on RHEL 8, and this is what enables the um, copy on write data extents. Also note that the block size is 4K. We'll come back to that later. In order to demonstrate the XFS copy on write data extents, we'll use the DD command to create a two gigabyte file full of random data. This file will be named test2g. Okay, that file's been created, and if we run an ls-al, we can see the file there. Next, we'll run a df-h, and you can see that we're using 26 gigs of space on this file system. And now we're going to do a regular copy with a cp command. Notice when you press enter, it takes a small amount of time to do that copy, because it's actually duplicating all those blocks into a new file. And if we run ls-al, you can see the new file there, and if you run df-h, can see that we're now using 28 gigs of space, so we've gone up two gigs as expected. Next, we'll look at using a cp minus minus ref link um, command. This is what enables the XFS copy on write data extents. Notice when you press enter here how quickly the command returns back. That's because it's not actually having to duplicate all these data blocks. If we run ls minus al, you can see the new file there, and you can see these files all look the same. You can't tell the difference between these files based on the ls minus al output. And if we run a df-h, you can see we're still using 28 gigs of space, even though we copied that file. Well, now we'll use the XFS bmap command to show the actual block mappings of the test2g file and then our regular file that we copied. You can see, based on the block ranges, that that original copy we did, the traditional copy, caused the block ranges to be totally different. That's because it actually picked up that data and copied it into new blocks um, which duplicated all that data. Let's compare that to the output if we look at the test2g file compared to the copy we made with the reflink command. You can see in this case the two files are using the same block ranges for the data. This is why when we ran the df command after the reflink copy um, it showed that we didn't use any additional space. That's because these files are sharing the same data blocks on the file system. Next we'll demonstrate what happens when we modify one of these files. We're going to use the dd command to insert some text into the middle of the test2g underscore reflink underscore cp file. This file is a 2 gig file, and the command line here will insert this text right in the middle of the file at the 1 gigabyte mark. And just to demonstrate that these files are actually different, we will use the md5 uh, sum command to generate checksums for both of these files, and you can see that both the checksums are different. Next, we'll run the df command and just show that we're still only using 28 gigs of space in this file system. And we're going to run a few sync commands here just to flush everything to the disk. And then we're going to use the xfs bmap command to look at the block mappings of these files again. You'll notice things look a little bit different this time. Um, if we start at the top, the first block range is still the same. The file is still matched between the two. The next one is the same as well. You'll notice the third one, however, the original file and our reflink copy have different block ranges and we have a total of eight 512 byte blocks. What this is showing is that when we modified that data right in the middle of the file it allocated new blocks for the test2g reflink copy command but the rest of the blocks are still the same. If we look at the rest of the file the last uh, two entries here are identical. So basically what we're seeing here is when we modified this file it only allocated new data blocks for the portion of the file that was changed. You can also use the cp minus minus ref link on a directory level. If we look at this directory, um, it's the Linux 4.2.3 kernel source code. And if we do an ls minus on there, you can see there's quite a few files and directories. And if we do a recursive listing, you can see there's quite a few files and directories um, within this directory. If we do a du minus sm, we can see it's using 913 megabytes of space. And you can see right now our file system is using about 27,967 megabytes. What we'll do is we'll do a cp minus ref link and we'll do a minus ar to recursively copy this into a new directory. You can see this takes a little bit longer because it's still having to create the metadata for all those files. But it's still quicker than a regular copy command because the data blocks aren't being duplicated. 
If we do an ls minus al, we can see the two directories here. If we do a df minus m to look at the use space, we can see it went up about 37 megabytes due to the metadata for the files. However, it's still a lot less than the 913 megabytes that the original directory contained. And if we do an ls minus al, we can see that everything looks normal as far as the ls output. So as you've seen in this video, using XFS copy on write data extents might help you save time and space when copying files. I hope you get a chance to try out the Relate beta and specifically to try out the XFS copy on write data extents. Thanks a lot for watching the video and I hope you have a great day today.